Hello chess lovers, Sonen here and in today's video I want to share with you a famous chess game known as the Uruguayan Immortal. On the white side is B. Molinari and his opponent is Uruguayan chess master Louis Ru Cabral. Cabral won the Uruguayan chess championship twice in 1948 and 1971 and uh, played for Uruguay in the chess olympiads of 1939, 1964 and 1966. This game is from 1943 Uruguayan Chess Championship. With this being said now we can go through the game. So Molinari opened up with d4 to which the hero of this game Louis Rucabral answered with knight f6, knight f3, d5, c4. Queen's Gambit is on the board against which black is choosing Slav defense. Knight c3, knight bd7, e3, e6. Bishop d3 against semi Slav white is choosing Meran variation. With this move, white is provoking black to capture on c4, thus surrendering the center in exchange for queen side expansion. And also, black is gaining some TMP against the white bishop. Bishop goes back on d3, a6, white castled, c5. C5 is something which is allowing both later uh, to have an open diagonal for the light squared bishop and also will allow black to somehow activate his pieces. Meanwhile, the players are busy with developing their pieces. A4, B4. Knight goes back on B1, rook C8. Knight BD2. Meanwhile, white is bringing his knight on C4 square which seems to be a pretty square for the white knight, right? Uh, let me tell you that all in all we have an equality, nothing special. And finally, Blake is also castling, is bringing his king on the safe part of the board and is connecting his rooks. Bishop d2, a5. Blake is strengthening the pawn on b4 but is doing it at the cost of surrendering the b5 square which white knight instantly occupied and queen a8. Now black has a nice pressure down the long diagonal. Knight bd6. Uh, white is attacking black rook and seems like that also if you move away your rook, uh, white is ready to get rid of this bishop, which is which feels really strong. Uh, but it was in here that uh, Cabral made an interesting decision and instead of moving away his rook, he played bishop takes g2. He goes for an exchange sacrifice. But in return, yes, he managed to remove this key defender of white king and later the absence of that pawn will become catastrophic for white. Relying on that fact, black will manage to organize a strong king side attack. Already the threat was, for example, bishop f3, right? That's why white neutralized that threat, but mm, playing e4 is better. And then f3, if here the knight takes d2. And in this case, actually, white is managing to neutralize opponent's attack down the long diagonal. Uh, instead we have rook e1, bishop f3, queen f1, queen d5. Black, black queen is hurrying to exploit the weaknesses of white's king side. e4. White is not only attacking black queen but is also opening up the dark squared bishop's diagonal, thus taking under control that essential square. And so we reached the critical position where Uruguayan chess master found a spectacular continuation. Please pause the video and try to find Black's next moves. Ready? Uh, well, look, according to Engine in here, playing Queen h5 is also good, but Cabral's move was just fantastic and he went for rook take c4. The second rook sacrifice is on the board and right now we also have a hanging queen, right? But accepting the queen sacrifice will put an end to white's life. Checkmate will follow very quickly. White king is in a mating net. That's why after rook takes c4 white accepted the rook sacrifice. And we have queen h5. 
And now, queen g6 can be a nice threat, right? That's why white played bishop f4 with the idea of covering the king. But there comes the knight, knight g4. Bishop e2, and that second knight jumps into the attack. Yes, all black pieces are joining the party, although still at the moment, black's dark squared bishop is not doing much. That's why, guys, we have to activate it. We have to, we have to invite this guy to a party. Bishop c5 hitting on f2. The knight is, of course, untouchable because there is a mating threat. Bishop g3, white is trying to keep the king side solid, but there follows another heavy blow. Can you find black's next move? Ready? This time we have knight takes f2. White accepted the peace sacrifice, and finally a check followed. King h2, queen f4 check, bishop g3. And so we reach the position where already there is a forced mate in four. Please pause the video and try to find Black's next moves. Ready? Here we go. Bishop g1 check. With this move, Black forces White to move either the queen or the king. In case of king takes g1, you are losing the bishop. That's why white played queen takes g1, and after another heavy blow, after knight g4 check, finally white resigned. Let me tell you that in case you found knight g4 check, then followed by bishop g1 check, then it's also uh, precise. In this case, again, checkmate follows in four move, both bishop g1 check or knight g4 check are equally strong. So, here comes knight g4 check and we have a resignation because after h takes g4, black can announce a check from h6 and then can announce a checkmate. So, if we take a look at the final position, we can see that black is two rooks down, so we saw two rook sacrifices. Also, right now the knight is hanging, but the one who is winning is black. Just a fantastic game, and this truly deserves to be called an immortal. Thanks to our viewer for the suggestion. Feel free to share it with your friends. And in the end, a chess puzzle for you, where the task is to find mate in four. It's black to move. As usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in my next video.